Welcome back to A People's Guide to Publishing. I'm Joe Beal, the founder and CEO of Microcosm Publishing and Distribution. I'm also the author of A People's Guide to Publishing, which distills what I've learned from selling millions of books over the past 25 years. I'm Ellie Blue. I'm the Editorial and Marketing Director here at Microcosm. We are an independent midlist publisher based in Portland, Oregon. We have 14 employees, over 650 titles in print with 20 to 40 new books per year, and we distribute thousands of titles from other publishers. We started this podcast so that we can share what we've learned with newer publishers so that you can learn from our mistakes. Or perhaps you just want to better understand the publishing industry. All right, this week we're talking about a book called The Courage Party by Joyce Brabner, illustrated by Gerta Operaku. What's this book about, Joe? So this book is about what to do to build your child's confidence in the unfortunate event of a sexual assault and to like reshape your child's self-image and or i don't know your own self-image in the event of these kinds of events that often you know you are victimized and then made to feel like it was your fault rather than something that somebody did to you outside of your control and that's a big it's a big topic you know because like even as much as this stuff takes over the news and you know it's been a really big couple years for these kinds of conversations but we still don't really look at the like oh what do you do to heal from that afterwards it's really about you know everything except the rebuilding parts joyce calls it a me too book for kids mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is, or adults yeah or former kids mm -hmm. well we're all kids some of us are just taller kids the um so what's the story of how this book came to be so um in my youth i had the privilege of meeting harvey and joyce who were harvey P picar and joyce later subjects of the uh, american splendor hbo documentary which confused me thoroughly because i just thought of them as like the most two normal people that i knew wait there's a documentary i'm sorry um narrative uh, biopic I'm sure it was pretty authentic. I bet Joyce has something to say about that, mm -hmm. though. There's some feelings all around on this matter. But um, point being, yeah, and then um, I remember it was maybe 2001 where Joyce came up to me at an event, and she's like, HBO is making well, she, this movie about our family. Like, I need you to invite me to this event so they will pay for us to travel, and then we can do this whole thing. And I was like, you know, I, I just couldn't really believe that any of this was happening. And then 10 years after that, I got another phone call. Um, maybe not even 10 years, maybe five years after that, I got another phone call that was like, Joe, I'm not getting along with my publisher. I want you to publish my books from now on. And then a few years after that, um, things slowly took more and more shape. And then eventually we ended up with a courage party, but not before I could get Joyce to write the foreword for my book, Good Trouble, about those early formative years of microcosm, and um, a few other salient ideas for books, um, because a lot of the, the real tragedy here was that a lot of the famous American Splendor comics, and particularly Our Cancer Year, that she co-wrote with Harvey uh, went out of print somehow, horrifyingly, which I feel like is like American canon comic books, you know. So we started talking about reissuing those, but this is the book that had been kind of shelved for some years, so... It sounds like other publishers weren't interested in writing a book about sexual assault for children. Well, you know, or... and that wasn't seemingly the problem. It seemed like, um, from her telling of the story, it seemed like the problem is that they weren't getting it. Right. And it's like they couldn't understand the point of this book, or like what was compelling about it, or... It sounds like they've had pretty good lives. Right, yeah. Or, like, they couldn't understand... You know, there's a stigma in publishing, if you haven't um, encountered this yet, where people really have this notion that you can't talk about negative things. Uh -huh. You know? And, like, I get it. It's like, you're never going to sell millions of books about like the horrors left behind by a natural disaster or whatever unless you're like writing about it in a historic sense about how it changed the world 
you know, and I think books like The Courage Party sort of fall into that, you know, where people like sort of lump in this with a broader, like it's hard to sell a book that tells somebody how terrible the world is for basic obvious reasons. It's like everybody has reasons to believe the world is already terrible and they don't need further convincing. But when we first announced the Courage Party, like it was too excitement and acclaim, I would say, and yeah. it looked like it was actually going to uh, do pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, it was going to sell to libraries and schools and the comics market, and then it came back from print when? Uh, it was March. I think it was early uh, April, right? Oh yeah, it may have been early April. I was gonna, I would say late March, but I may be wrong here. It was like right in that pocket of like right when everything locked down. A certain global event occurred. Yeah. Let's just say that <laughs> we... closed every comic book store because it closed the sole comic book distributor that serviced those <sighs> stores. So even if they wanted to be open, they had no way to get books. It closed virtually every public and private county, city, state library, private library. And it closed virtually every school before too long. So and people weren't like sitting at home during quarantine being like, now's really the time to dig into our trauma. <laughs> okay, let me talk to my child about this <laughs> traumatic event. Because it was more like, we're forming new traumas. Let us, yeah, let figure us do out some jigsaw puzzles. Deal with that. Yeah. And so um, we've been sort of stuck in a weird in between land of like, you know. This book was dealt a mighty blow, sort of out of the gate, you know, and um, yeah, it'll be hard to really know what goes on until, like, we see if we can reinvigorate those uh, sales and that interest. But, um, you know, and then similarly, a lot of the problem is, like, fundamental damage is being done to those parts of the industry that, like, will not be the same afterwards so so what are we going to do to try to get this book out into the world even after its bumpy start so you know i mean pushing it again we made a little gerta made a beautiful promotional comic that is just tells the story of this book in four pages which is awesome and you know and so but we have been sort of struggling because like we can reignite those library pushes but it's hard to have an active push so what we're looking at is acquiring library lists pushing key reviews through what are called um accredited reviewers for libraries so basically like what that means is that like when a library buys a book if parents complain especially about a book about i don't know sexual assault then they have a lot of liability unless they can say these highly respected sources suggested this was an essential acquisition for libraries and then they avoid liability that way so getting in with places like that will really be our key here and i think we're also we have copies to donate um oh that's true i forgot about this yeah so we're gonna do some donations to like women's shelters and family shelters and uh we've done we've done some donations to middle school teachers who are super excited about it and the, yeah and that's been interesting like it's been really like we got a little piece of you know just prior to all this we like researched all the shelters and we built the mailing list and then we were like well this is probably not the first thing on the mind of all those shelters but yeah. We're ready when they are. Yeah, so we're gonna, this is, we, we believe in this book. This book is important. This book is gonna save kids' lives yeah. and adults' lives. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll try to get it out there. If you have any ideas about where the Courage Party can connect with humans, mm -hmm. you know how to contact us. Let us know. Until next week, where we talk about things that are a little less savage. Thanks for joining us once again. Please send your questions to podcast at microcosmpublishing.com so we can answer them on future episodes. And please give us five stars on iTunes and everywhere else that podcasts are reviewed. You can find us on the internet at microcosm.pub. On Twitter at microcosm. On Facebook at microcosm publishing. On Instagram at microcosm underscore pub. And here in Portland, Oregon on North Williams Avenue. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week.